Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Ever since I started this channel in August of 2021, we had been looking forward to, and now we're looking back at, the eclipse that took place on April 8th. It seemed significant. It went over the Sacred Grove, Fayette, New York, and also the Kirtland Temple a month after uh, the temple was purchased by the church. And then in connection with the eclipse in 2017 that went over Jackson County, far west, Adam on Diamond, and then the October 2023 eclipse that went through Utah and missed all the temples except for one operating temple, the Monticello, Utah Temple. It really seemed like this was a sign specifically to the church. So what was going to happen once we got to April 8th? Was something going to happen on that day? Was something going to happen afterwards? And I think we're starting to maybe find out. So there's a big story today that has to do with the sun. And uh, I came across this post from Alex Russell. He says, the last month has been absolutely insane. And he has a picture of the eclipse, uh, a picture of the aurora borealis, uh, which, by the way, there's going to be a lot of us that I think that can see it tonight because of what's happening with the sun right now. And then there's been a large tornado outbreak, which interestingly started with Utah. I'm going to do another video about that. That's like a whole other video unto itself. But uh, uh, there's an article that came out that mentioned that fact that it started with Utah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, crazy things are happening since that eclipse. And uh, who knows what's next. But let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I have this. Uh, this is Professor, Professor Matthew Owens. It is a mess out there. So <clears throat> if you don't know what this is, this is basically a tool or uh, like a reading of the sun shooting out CMEs, coronal mass ejections, which are a lot of the time associated with solar flares, although they are two separate things, but they usually coincide. But we're talking about CMEs today, and uh, this is what we can expect uh, within, well, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, and I, what, from what I've heard, the next few hours or later today. So the sun is in the middle right here, and then this black dot represents Earth. So let me just play this, and this is what the sun just did. CME, 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 CME. Boom. Okay, so... Aurora Alerts account says four CME shock waves from the sun now estimated to hit Earth. Notice how the second wave is so fast it overtakes the first. Still shooting for Friday night for possible Aurora. See soft serve news for updates. And uh, I'll show you that in just a minute, the Aurora, the Aurora forecast. BNO News posted this from the National Weather Service. What large sunspot groups and flares lead to first G4 watch since 2005? On Thursday, May 9th, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center issued a severe G4 geomagnetic storm watch, the first since January 2005. So that would have been during President Hinckley's presidency. At least five Earth-directed coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, were observed and expected to arrive as early as midday Friday, May 10th, 2024. So at the time that I'm recording this, just a few hours from now. And persist through Sunday, May 12th, 2024. This is an unusual event. So let's take note of that. This is an unusual event, according to the National Weather Service. Several strong flares have been observed over the past few days and were associated with a large and magnetically complex sunspot cluster, NOAA Region 3664, which is 16 times the diameter of Earth. Which I, I wonder if that means that it's grown even larger because... Yesterday, when I was doing a video about this, they were saying 15 times um, the width of Earth. So additional solar activity is expected from the region. Only three severe geomagnetic storms have been observed during this solar cycle, which began in December 2019. Or in other words, just a year after President Nelson became president of the church. The last G4 severe was on March 23rd, 2024. So let me just point out, so there have been actual um, G4 geomagnetic storms, but the last time that a watch was issued, so like a, a forecast, was back in 2005. What's interesting about this date, you'll remember that the church purchased the Kirtland Temple on March 5th of 2024, 
and then it reopened to the public under the ownership of the church on March 25th. So that last G4 uh, severe geomagnetic storm happened just two days before the temple opened. All right, continuing. in the last G5, or extreme, was the Halloween storms in October 2003. That G5 resulted in power outages in Sweden and damaged power transformers in South Africa. Okay, this is from Landon Muller. I think this is the sixth Halo CME now, making for the seventh in line to potentially hit Earth. So, I I, I, I don't know, uh, but that, that's interesting if it was seven, because we just read that it was uh, five Earth-directed CMEs, but he's saying now it looks like it's actually seven. So if that's how many hit Earth, uh, that's obviously... There's a lot of potential for that being a sign. You know, seven is the Lord's number. We talk about seven quite a bit on this channel. So he is saying uh, that he thinks that there's actually seven. Okay, from Chuck Colesto, uh, he posted a, another thing from the National Weather Service. What? Several CMEs will, uh, will quite likely reach Earth and lead to highly elevated geomagnetic activity. Event? A CME is an eruption of solar material. When they arrive at Earth, a geomagnetic storm can result. Watches at this level are very rare. Timing. The CMEs are anticipated to merge and arrive at Earth by late on May 10th or early on May 11th. Effects. The general public should visit our webpage to keep properly informed. The aurora may uh, become visible over much of the northern half of the country and maybe as far south as Alabama to Northern California. So I'm no, we're going to look at a map in just a minute. Uh, really quick, as far as like what to do, I would take this advice, but I was, I was listening to um, a press briefing, and I think it was with Noah. I was watching it on uh, B&O News here on Twitter they ha- or on X. Uh, they had a live stream. And uh, they were talking about the way that you would prepare for this is the same way that you would prepare for any other disaster. You know, have... Um, ideally, if you have a generator, like that would be best so you can generate your own electricity, um, but also just have supplies and, you know, food storage and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> but if you want to know more than, than go there, uh, like they suggest, but just be prepared like you would for any other disaster. Okay. I came across this on YouTube. This is the, the local news here. And, uh, you know, she's pointing out that this could be visible in Kansas, which I hope that that's the case. I hope that that happens because I've never seen uh, the Aurora. So I would really like to see it. So I will be watching tonight. And um, here's the like the forecast. So let me see if I can make this bigger. No, that just makes it smaller. So, yeah, uh, northern California, northern Nevada, uh, most of Utah, interestingly, so that would include Salt Lake and then most of Colorado. Oh, there's a rocket attack. There's kind of like been a spat of rocket attacks today uh, in Israel. And then it looks like all of Kansas, um, northern Oklahoma, <coughs> excuse me, northern Arkansas. Oh, my gosh. There is an attack going on right now. All of Missouri. So that's significant, too, when you have Salt Lake and you have Missouri. Uh, whenever you have something that affects those two places at the same time. Why don't we just open this? And uh, is this going to be a, a big one? Where is it taking place? Uh, just southeast of Gaza. And that's where the earlier attacks were taking place earlier today. I don't know if it's... It, it probably has to do with the fact that Israel is now closing in on Rafah, the last stronghold of Hamas. So maybe they're thinking, you know what? You know, they see the writing on the wall and so... Maybe they're just like, okay, just fire them all off. Just It's done. Just fire them all off. I don't know. Okay, well, back to this. Hopefully there's no more rocket attacks. So anytime when something affects both um, Salt Lake and Kansas City or, you know, Jackson County at the same time, uh, I find that interesting, especially when it's something rare like this. That, that would be phenomenal if both Salt Lake and um, the Kansas City area sees the aurora. 
Like seriously. But anyway, you can see the map here. It continues. You have Tennessee, uh, North Carolina in the very northern extremes of South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama, and maybe a teeny tiny bit of Mississippi. Um, but look what this person says. I believe this is the first time the University of Alaska has made a KP8 index, a rural oval, over the United States. And who? All I can say is wow. Uh, this person posted the same graphic, Eric Webb. Holy moly, this is quite an aurora forecast. So you guys, you might want to go outside and look up uh, if you're in these areas tonight. Uh, I don't, again, put in the comments if you've seen the aurora or if you haven't. And if you haven't, if you're if you're definitely going to like look for this tonight, I hope that you do. Uh, for me, I, I think it's probably going to be like a once in a lifetime if, if I do see it because I don't plan on really going north um, in the future, but... Who knows? Okay, and then you have this from CBS News. Rare, severe geomagnetic storm watch issued for first time in nearly 20 years amid unusual solar event. Uh, and, you know, I guess I might as well mention that's one of the things that I have on my spreadsheet um, where, like, there's all these different things that seem to be coinciding with right now, with uh, this year, but especially early this year. So if we go to my spreadsheet called Profits, President Nelson, I should probably re rename this, but it seems like it's kind of focused on President Nelson and the Kirtland Temple. So you have all these different things that are happening at the same time in 2024. And one of those things that I didn't explain in the other video was in 2004, uh, April 2004, that's when President Oaks, at the time Elder Oaks in the Quorum of the Twelve, gave what I thought was a pretty unusual talk about the second coming, where he listed out like a bullet point list of the signs of the times and things to look for. He mentioned the the waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds. And then later that year, the day after Christmas, there was a gigantic tsunami and earthquake that hit Indonesia, and it killed over 200,000 people, which that's very rare. That's, that's uh, incredibly deadly and uh, not common. So anyway, um, I've looked at all these different things like earthquakes and um, what else? Earthquakes, hurricanes, so on and so forth, volcanic activity. And it has increased since that time, you know. And so this is potentially another thing. He gave that talk and then here we are 20 years later because 20 is a nice round number. And uh, these things are taking place. Not to mention the fact that it's five years from the time that President Nelson said, time is running out. Uh, that was in his talk called Come Follow Me. He showed Paradise, California, which was a city that was burnt by fire, just like the earth is going to be burnt by fire at the second coming. And then at the end of the talk, he said, time is running out. And then, of course, a lot of these things with the sun undoubtedly are happening because um they believe that we're currently in or approaching solar maximum. I think probably at this point, it's safe to say that we are, but, you know, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. But anyway, back to this. <clears throat> a severe geomagnetic storm could emerge on Friday, triggering a, a watch for a storm of this magnitude uh, from triggering a watch for a storm of this magnitude from NOAA officials for the first time in nearly 20 years. The watch comes after days of solar activity that seemingly sent several explosions of plasma and magnetic fields toward Earth. G4s are the second strongest form of geomagnetic storms and are, <coughs> excuse me, and are known to potentially cause widespread voltage control problems. According to NOAA, they can also cause some <coughs> protective systems to trip out key assets from the grid, as well as orientation issues for spacecraft. Aurora Borealis, otherwise known as the Northern Lights, could be seen as far south as Alabama and in Northern California as well. So this right here, this is not, well, maybe this is kind of the, the well, this is pretty similar uh, to the Aurora um, graphic that we were, the, the like Aurora forecast, but it's a little bit different. But I think, I think that this one is more accurate because it, I think it's more recent. Okay, quote, if geomagnetic storms were hurricanes, severe would be category four, spaceweather.com says. Okay, so we're having like the equivalent of like a category four 
uh, sun hurricane uh, hitting Earth. Uh, that's probably a really bad way to describe it. Uh, it's like it's like you know if you're trying to compare the two things. Okay. There has also been a series of coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, which are explosions of plasma and magnetic fields that come out of the sun's corona, the outermost part of the, of the sun's atmosphere. At least five CMEs appear directed toward Earth, and then we saw from that one guy, uh, potentially seven, and could arrive as early as midday on Friday and persist through Sunday, the agency said. And then <clears throat> they took note of the fact that Noah said, this is an unusual event. In a call with reporters on Friday, Sean Dahl, service coordinator at the Space Weather Prediction Center. Oh, this must be the one that I was watching live. This must have been that that briefing. Uh, said that some CMEs, quote, are catching up with other ones, end quote. He said officials are expecting a big shock arrival when they hit Earth. Dahl said, uh, while, official, while officials aren't predicting a G5 storm, the strongest of geomagnetic storms. They also can't discount a quote-unquote low-end G5 event. So wouldn't that be something? And I, and I wish I knew when the last time there was a G5, um, but I haven't researched that. Quote, we're really buckling down here. Brent Gordon, chief of the Space Weather Services branch, also said on the call. Um. I heard them say they were talking about the fact that they've notified, you know, like power companies and uh, that there's things that they can do to like minimize uh, the effects. If this like turns out to be like a Carrington event or, or something like that, that they can like monitor certain levels. And once it gets to a certain point, they can like shut things down to like uh, minimize damage. It was like something to that effect. But there are some things that they can do. But I guess thing for us, I guess the best thing for us to do is just make sure that we're prepared. Have a seventy-two hour kit, food storage. I mean, at this point, it's kind of too late. Hopefully, you already have that. But just be aware that, you know, the power could go out, and and who knows? Just be prepared. Okay, so yeah, last month has been absolutely insane, and it looks like it's continuing into May, and uh, we'll see what the rest of the year looks like. Uh, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.